34 to 36. Two votes in it. I'm devastated for Canberra citizens who are sick of being treated as second class. And I'm devastated for all the people who are genuinely suffering and their families. I'm devastated for all those who want to have choice and control throughout their lives, including for some the most important part of their lives, the end of their lives. In supporting this remonstrance, like the Chief Minister, I also want to thank the 34 senators who did the right thing, who did the right thing by us. Many of them, as the Chief Minister indicated, in spite of whatever personal views they hold. And I do want to also make special mention of the ACT senators. Thank you to Senator Dave Smith for his support for this bill, despite not supporting voluntary assisted dying. Madam Speaker, Senator Dave Smith gets it. He gets territory rights. He gets what's important to Territorians. And he gets that we should be allowed to have the debate here in this chamber and to stand up for the people that we represent, whatever our views are here in this chamber. But Madam Speaker, Senator Seselja should be ashamed, particularly as a former member of this place, as a former leader of the opposition in this place, the way he has treated Canberrans, the way he has treated the ACT Legislative Assembly, the way he has treated people who have elected him is absolutely appalling. By standing up for his personal beliefs instead of the rights of the people he represents, Senator Seselja has rendered vo Ken Barron's voiceless on this, this most important issue. I am particularly glad to hear from the Leader of the Opposition today that Canberra Liberals will, who want to, will finally, finally be able to speak up for this. But Madam Speaker, where were they in the lead up to yesterday's debate? With respect to yesterday's debate, I'm sorry, but it is too little, too late. But with respect to the future, I implore you, through you, Madam Speaker, join with us together. Join with the ACT Greens and ACT Labor in standing up for territory rights constantly. And I hope that the Leader of the Opposition continues to let you exercise your conscience on territory rights. I do want to briefly go through the grievances and I'll echo some of the things uh, that the Chief Minister said. Again, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's absurd that uh, if we go 15 minutes away, if I lived 15 minutes from here in New South Wales, that I could have my views represented by my local parliamentarians in the state parliament and that they could make laws for me. With respect to the debate on Tuesday and, and last night, it was just so frustrating to hear so many senators conflate their personal views on voluntary assisted dying with restoring territory rights. They were absolutely paternalistic and it was disgusting to see uh, that they simply uh, couldn't uh, trust us to make the decisions for ourselves, that they have such disdain for their fellow Australians is reprehensible, that they purposely misrepresented the intentions of the Territory Parliaments if the bill happened to pass. Madam Speaker, you know as well as I do, there is no voluntary assisted dying scheme on the table. The Chief Minister, the Attorney General, has said time and time again that no legislation will be rushed through. We have a committee process and all members in this place, because we are represented by all members in this place on that committee, know how carefully we are considering the issue in that committee. 
Also, the, the fact that they continue to quote one or more debunked sources as a reference point. Anything by Professor Margaret Somerville honestly just needs to go in the bin. And that senators reneged on positions that they had told their electors they would be voting for. Senator Burston is a case in point. I've seen a letter that Senator Burston wrote to one of their constituents saying, yes, I will be supporting this. It was unequivocal. And then to, to turn around, what is their excuse? Many people have contacted me in the last 15 hours. More people have contacted me in the last 15 hours, actually, than the number of people who contacted me in the 15 hours after I was elected. Madam Speaker, I want to pay tribute to these Canberrans whose rights were denied last night, who are otherwise rendered voiceless by giving them a voice here today. One person said, please don't give up on this, Tara. This is so important. Another said, I thought politicians were there to represent the community, not themselves. Unfortunately, this yet again proves this is not the case. This is why I'm losing faith in the whole institution. Another said, this is not democratic. If we can't decide for ourselves, then we live in a dictatorship. Another said, we will not forget or forgive those people who deny our rights. And yet another, why the rights of Territorians could possibly be a religious or conscience issue is difficult to comprehend. And another, an outsider to the ACT, said it's disappointing to see how this has been framed as a vote on voluntary euthanasia rather than a vote to restore a right for territories to choose in the same way that states can. And another said, with respect to Senator Seselja, I'm devastated we have a senator who isn't fighting for the rights of the ACT to legislate the same as the states. Another said, there is no rational reason for denying the ACT rights legislated in every state. Senator Seselja's betrayal is no surprise. His career has shown he is without vision, is blatantly cynical, an empty man viewing all his political decisions through the prism of self-interest. His treachery should give hope to potential Liberal candidates for ACT senator who could clearly serve the ACT far, far better. And another said, again with respect to Senator Seselja, a leader who looks out for his own interests and not that of the people he is supposed to represent is no leader. He is then just a manipulator of power for his own personal agenda. Madam Speaker, I commend this motion today. It is unusual, but it is important. What the Senate has done, Madam Speaker, is paternalistic. Madam Speaker, it is repugnant. Madam Speaker, it is unforgivable and it is inexcusable. It is wicked. We will not give up. This does not end here. Thank you. The question is that Mr Barr's motion be agreed to Mr Rattenbury.